Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Suman Jain, Chief Medical Research Officer and Secretary of Thalassemia and Sickle Cell Society, Hyderabad. Today, I'm going to give a talk on counseling of genetic disorders. A genetic disorder is an abnormal condition that a person inherits through genes or chromosomes. They are caused by a pathogenic mutations in a specific genes, mutations that affect the structure of protein or excess amount of genetic material. Genetic diseases are of three types. Chromosomal disorders where chromosomes or part of chromosomes are missing or excess or altered, example Down syndrome. And complex disorders result from mutations in the multiple genes coupled with environmental causes, hypertension. Single gene disorder where a mutation affects one gene, example sickle cell anemia or thalassemia. Chromosomal disorders result from a change in the number or structure of chromosomes. They are classified as numerical abnormalities, are the most severe form caused by a loss or a gain of whole chromosomes which can affect hundreds or even thousands of genes that are usually fatal. Like Down syndrome is caused by a gain of chromosome 21. And structural abnormalities are caused by alteration in the structure of the chromosome, wherein a portion of the chromosome is deleted, duplicated, inverted, or translocated. Creduchat syndrome caused by deletion of short term of chromosome 5. Chromosomal disorders they occur due to errors in cell division. Most of them originate in the gametes or some occur during embryo development or are inherited from a parent. Some occur in a somatic cells which cannot be inherited from one generation to the next. The age of the mother and certain environmental factors may play a role in the occurrence of genetic errors. Chromosome analysis or karyotyping can be done to evaluate the number and structure of person's chromosomes in order to detect abnormalities. Chromosomal disorders can be diagnosed before birth using prenatal tests such as coronic villus sampling, CVS, or amniocentesis, which provide an accurate assessment of a patient's risk of carrying a fetus with a chromosomal disorder. Complex disorders are diseases that are caused in large part by genes and environmental factors. Since they do have a genetic component, they can be seen running through a family, but the inheritance pattern may not be very clear. Example, hypertension, diabetes, arthritis. It is difficult to define the role of genetic factors in these disorders as the families may share same environments and similar lifestyles. Hence, it is difficult to determine a person's risk of inheriting or passing on these disorders. It is also difficult to study and treat because the specific factors that cause most of these disorders have not yet been identified. Research is still on looking for major contributing genes for many common complex disorders. Single gene disorders are caused by variations or mutations in the DNA sequence of a specific gene. Example, in thalassemia HBB gene, sickle cell anemia HBB gene, cystic fibrosis CFTR, etc. The DNA changes affect the product that the gene codes for usually a protein, causing it to be altered or missing. They are inherited from parents to children as they result due to specific gene variations. Genes are present in two copies in any person when inherited from each parent. Sometimes they are caused by new de novo mutations during egg or sperm formation in the parents or during the development of embryo. In case of the de novo mutations, they are not inherited from parents to the subsequent children born. Tracking down the genetic basis in these cases can be challenging, often requiring extensive testing. The inheritance pattern of a single gene diseases are often referred to as Mendelian. There are five basic modes of inheritance for single gene disease. Autosomal dominant, Huntington's disease, mutations in only one copy of gene can cause the disease. Each affected person has one affected parent and occurs in every generation. Autosomal recessive, sickle cell anemia, mutations in both copies of the gene cause the disease. 
and both parents of an affected person are carriers, not typically seen in every generation. X-link dominant hypophosphatemic rickets, the mutations gene is located on the X chromosome and females are frequently affected, can have affected males and females in same generation. X-link recessive hemophilia, males are frequently affected and affected males often present in each generation. Mitochondrial Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy can affect both males and females, but only passed on by females, can appear in every generation. There are some examples of mode of inheritance of diseases, autosomal recessive like ADA deficiency, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, cystic fibrosis, phenylketonuria, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, congenital hearing impairment, and autosomal dominant, Familial hypercholesterolemia, Marfan syndrome, osteogenesis imperfecta, neurofibromatosis, achondroplasia, X-linked recessive Duchenne muscular dystrophy, hemophilia A, X-linked dominant hypophosphatemic rickets, Pagilex syndrome, and mitochondrial, mitochondrial myopathy, diabetes mellitus, deafness, Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, Lay syndrome, neuropathic ataxia, retinitis pigmentosa, ptosis, and myoneurogenic gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal encephalopathy, MNGI. Detection of single gene disorder. The general approach for detecting single gene disorder involves the determination of a known molecular perturbation using molecular techniques, example, sequencing, RFLP, MLPA, etc. In recent years, newer technologies for DNA sequencing in a massive scale have been emerged that are referred to as the next generation sequencing. Next generation sequencing systems provide several sequencing approaches, including whole genome sequencing, whole exome sequencing, transcriptome sequencing, methylome, etc. Alternatively, if the actual mutation is not known, linkage analysis can be used to identify affected cases if the chromosome location has been determined. If sequencing of all coding regions of the genes in question does not reveal a perturbation, the assumption is that the pathogenesis involves the promoter region or post-transcriptional process. Despite advancement in the understanding of the genetic etiology and improved diagnostic capabilities, no treatments are available to prevent disease onset or slow disease progression for a number of these disorders. The best option is to prevent the recurrence of this condition through carrier testing. This blood test shows whether a person carry a mutation linked to the genetic disorders. This is recommended for everyone considering pregnancy, even if there is no family history. Prenatal screening, this testing usually involves a blood testing from a pregnant woman that tells a person how likely it is that an unborn child could have a genetic disorder. Newborn screening, this test uses a sample of newborn baby's blood and detecting genetic disorders early in life so that early treatment can be provided to the child and thereby reduce the mortality and morbidity among the affected children. Genetic counseling, a type of consultation where genetic counselor communicates with patient or family members to understand clinical genetic aspects of a medical condition. <laughs> Hemoglobinopathy is a single gene disorder, which I'm going to discuss in detail. Molecular basis of hemoglobinopathy. Hemoglobinopathy are blood disorders caused by defective hemoglobin a protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen to tissues, thereby causing anemia. A single RBC contains about 300 million hemoglobin molecules. Each hemoglobin molecule comprises of four protein globin chains, two of each type and one heme group. And different types of hemoglobin are synthesized in human body depending on the stages of development, that is embryonic, fetal and adult hemoglobin. The formation of these globin chains is controlled by HbA1, HbA2 alpha, HbB beta, HbD delta, and HbG1 and HbG2 gamma genes located on chromosome 11 and 11, chromosome 16 and 11. 
Hemoglobin apathies are of two types. Thalassemia syndrome, beta thalassemia, there is little or no synthesis of hemoglobin. Structural hemoglobin variant, sickle cell anemia, E thalassemia, abnormal hemoglobin is synthesized. Hemoglobin disorders are inheritable blood disorders as they are passed down from parents to their children. And they are inherited in autosomal recessive mode. That is two defective genes are required to cause the disease. And when two carriers marry, then there is always 25% risk at every pregnancy that the child might be affected. This is inheritance of hemoglobinopathies. If both the parents carry normal or healthy globin genes, all the children are healthy. If one of the parents carries an affected beta globin gene, then he or she is a beta thalassemia carrier, then 50% of the children will be normal and 50% will be carrier. If both parents carry the defective gene, then 25% chance the child will be affected, 50% chance the child will be trait, and 25% chance the child will be normal. Based on the types of defective globin chain, thalassemia is divided into beta, alpha, and delta. They may also be co-inherited inherited together, causing alpha beta thalassemia or delta beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia is the most severe form of anemia. It is also known as police anemia. And patient requires lifelong blood transfusion and treatment. Patients are categorized in thalassemia major or thalassemia intermedia based on the levels of beta globin gene and severity. More than 300 defects in beta gene are identified to cause beta thalassemia, leading to absence or reduced levels of beta globin synthesis. Most common variation in genes include IVS15 G to C, IVS11 G to T, codon 41 by 42 dash minus TCTT and codon 8 by 9 plus G and the 619 base pair deletion accounting for over 90% of the mutations in the beta thalassemia patients. Alpha thalassemia, unlike beta thalassemia, four genes are involved in causing alpha thalassemia. Based on the number of gene defects, alpha thalassemia can occur in different form. Alpha thalassemia, silent carrier, only one gene is defective, has slightly smaller blood cells than normal. Alpha thalassemia carrier, two genes are defective, have mild anemia. Hemoglobin H disease, three genes are missing, may have moderate to severe anemia. And alpha thalassemia major, all four genes are defective, have severe anemia, and in most cases, a baby with this condition will die before birth. Most of the alpha thalassemia are caused by large deletions, but few point mutations are also involved in developing the condition. Delta beta thalassemia is a rare form of beta thalassemia characterized by a decreased or absence of a delta and beta globin chains, also known as F thalassemia, beta thalassemia type 2, and normal A2 beta thalassemia. It results in elevated levels of feta hemoglobin in the blood. Patient carrying two copies of delta beta defect show a silent phenotype, mostly requiring no transfusions. Delta beta change, when co with the beta globin change, shows a complex pattern of phenotypes with varying degrees of severity depending upon the beta globin mutations involved. Sickle cell anemia. SCD or HBS is caused by a substitution of the line for glutamic acid in position 6 of the beta globin chain, GAG or GTG, producing an abnormal hemoglobin. Red blood cells are sickle shaped, which clog blood vessels and cause severe pain crisis. Patients have only SCD are unaware of the disease as they are asymptomatic and can tolerate HB levels of 7 or 8 gram per deciliter. Problems arises only when damaged sickles erythrocytes occlude the microcirculation, blocking the blood vessels and cause episodes of severe pain. Hence, early diagnosis of SCA is mandatory to initiate early treatment. SCA is inherited in autosomal recessive pattern as thalassemia. SCA when co-inherited co with thalassemia causes sickle beta thalassemia. Diagnosis of hemoglobinopathies, complete blood picture to know the hemoglobin, MCV, MCH levels. HbA2 test, 
user using high performance liquid chromatography hplc for quantification of different types of normal and abnormal hb like normal hba hb a2 and hbf abnormal hbs hbe hbd hbq and molecular and dna screening using sequencing and other techniques treatment of hemoglobinopathy treatment of thalassemia major can be divided into two categories conventional management lifelong transfusion therapy iron chelation treatment of complications vaccination curative stem cell transplantation bone marrow transplantation or gene therapy prevention of hemoglobinopathy there is urgent need of prevention of hemoglobinopathy in india to the following reasons patients suffer with lifelong blood transfusion and medications cost of the treatment per patient ranges from 20000 to 25000 per month imposes social economic and financial burden on the affected families societies as well as healthcare system only cure available is bone marrow transplantation provided a hla match donor or haplo identical donor is present bmt is expensive and out of reach for many patients prevention of hemoglobinopathy prevention program for hemoglobinopathy includes the following components first is awareness and education among the public carrier screening prenatal diagnosis in case of pregnant mother screening genetic counseling carrier detection program is of two types general population screening and extended family screening general population screening involves assessing the prevalence of thalassemia trait in the entire population or in the subgroup of population limitation is cost effective testing protocols have to be used for carrier detection in population this test however have high negative predictive value and beta thal thalassemia nestroft has a positive predictive value 66% a negative predictive value is 97 to 100% and sickle cell solubility test is positive predictive value is 80% and negative predictive value is only 100% as per icmr guidelines an extended family screening involves screening of extended family members parents children aunts uncles grandparents cousins of an affected proband limitation is parents do not prefer to share information of their affected children with their relatives premarital screening involves testing of couples who are going to get married it aims to give the odds of transmitting the disorder to their children limitation inappropriate anxiety in the carrier especially the females and limiting marriage chances for females antenatal involves screening of antenatal women who are in their first trimester of pregnancy for thalassemia followed by a husband if she turns out to be carrier if both the couples are found to be carriers then fetus will be tested this is the best suitable method for preventing the recurrence of the disorder in the population limitations anxiety pain caused by against knowing the result mothers blamed for the condition of the fetus in acceptance of the positive result religious belief antenatal screening antenatal women who are in the first trimester of pregnancy about 16 to 20 weeks are screened for thalas for the carrier status of thalassemia and sickle cell anemia using the hplc followed by dna analysis in case antenatal woman is found to be carrier then her husband is also tested if both the couples turned out to be carriers then they are counseled about the risk of bearing an unaffected child and are advised to go for prenatal diagnosis in prenatal diagnosis chorionic villus sampling at 12 to 14 weeks of pregnancy or amniotic fluid at 16 to 20 weeks of pregnancy of the fetus is collected and dna is extracted from the sample after ruling out maternal contamination and the dna sample is then screened for mutations detected in the parents and if the sample is found to be carry two copies of the mutation then the couple is counseled and advised to follow the protocol that is medically terminate the pregnancy in order to save the child from lifelong sufferings and prevent the recurrence of the condition in the family this is the table table form where the the antenatal woman is been screened and the cbp hplc done if the antenatal woman found to be a carrier or negative then normal or positive one only affected thalassemia minor or sickle cell carrier or sickle cell anemia 
then the counseling and screening of husband done if husband is also carrier affected then nutritional testing of the couple done and severe sampling of the mother then at 10 to 12 weeks of uh, preg uh, pregnancy or amniocentesis 16 to 20 weeks of pregnancy if fetus is normal continue the pregnancy if only one mutation is present then also continue the pregnancy if two mutations are present then we have to follow the PrEP protocol that is terminate the pregnancy. Genetic counseling aims to replace misunderstanding about the cause of the disease with correct information and to increase people's control of their own and their family's health by informing them of the resources available for diagnosis, treatment and prevention. Counseling is given to create awareness about the disorder, its inheritance pattern, treatment and its prevention to avoid recurrence of the condition in the family and to reduce its incidence. Parents of a thalassemia child are informed that thalassemia is a genetic disorder and inherited from the parents to the children so that they don't blame the mother for the condition of the child. Extended family of the patients are informed about the risk of passing of disease to unborn children. Adults and their families are to be given premarital counseling, which includes HPLC testing for both the parent partners and they are advised not to marry if both turned out to be carriers. For preventing the socioeconomic and psychological stress of another thalassemic child, a couple with the affected child are counseled to undergo prenatal diagnosis and selective termination of the affected fetus. Counseling is also given at the stage of curative treatment to bone marrow transplant to keep the family's health and the medical history in check. Community-based uh, genetic screening. Community-based genetic screening would enhance population health by identifying individuals at high risk for the inherited condition like thalassemia. Awareness camps are to be organized to educate people about the various aspects of the genetic disorders and the need for getting screened for this disorder so as to avoid the recurrence of the condition in their families and also to approach for early treatment if already affected to reduce the morbidity and mortality. Healthcare professionals, including medical and paramedical, have to be trained in different aspects of genetic disorders, including diagnosis, treatment, and prevention measures, as they can play an important role in helping their patients navigate the rapidly changing terrain of genetic screening services by informing them about the benefits and the risk of new genetic and genomic technologies and empowering them to make more informed choices. Casket screening can be carried out to identify and test asymptomatic relatives of those affected by genetic disorder or previously identified as a carrier, which constitutes a gray zone between population-based genetic screening and genetic testing in clinical setting. Patient supports groups. Since the late 1960s, hundreds of parent support and patient advocacy groups have been identified for genetic disorders have been formed. These groups are usually started by a single individual affected person, a parent, a grandparent, or another family member seeking information who reaches out to the others. They play a remarkable and unique role in forming the collective voice of the individuals living with genetic disorders. They help in the identification, diagnosis, management, treatment, and prevention of such diseases. They provide information, encourage research, both by participation in research and by raising money for research, give families and affected family members the opportunity to learn from each other and open the way for social and intellectual interactions between the families, affected individuals, researchers, and healthcare providers. They organize social events, including meeting other families. Such events provide emotional support and opportunity to meet other affected individuals, particularly of different ages. Thus, patient support groups play a key role in helping patients and families with the genetic disorders. Genetic disorders are caused as a result of a change to or more mutations in DNA within the body cells. Most of them are rare and affected. One person in every several thousand or millions. They may or may not be inheritable, that is, passed down from parents to their children. They can be diagnosed by biochemical, cytogenetic, and molecular techniques. 
they are lifelong conditions for this reason treatment tends to be focus on helping a person manage the symptoms preventing complications and improving quality of life current therapy of genetic disorder involves a metabolic condition c gen gene product uh, the replacement cell or organ transplantation and gene therapy they can be prevented by carrier testing followed by genetic counseling and prenatal diagnosis thank you